Well, hello friends and wine lovers. It's been a while, but I'm finally back with the latest installment in my series of videos called The Best Red Wines for Beginners. Now, this has been a wild success to this date. These videos have been watched over 500,000 times. My channel just crossed over a million views recently, so thank you so much for all the support over the years. In a world of thousands of grapes and tens of thousands of different kinds of wines, where do you start and why? This series of videos is meant to help you figure that out. Today, we're looking at a lesser known, but nonetheless amazing red wine. That would be Zinfandel. It's enjoyed worldwide, but not as much as some of the other famous red grapes. So why is that? Let's talk a little bit about Zinfandel's history. I'll give you some tasting notes and some food pairing suggestions as well. And by the end of this video, I'm sure you'll love it too. When I conduct wine tastings, people tend to bristle a little bit when they hear the name Zinfandel. The first thing that comes to mind is a cheap, sweet blush wine. Even though the blush years were a short-lived trend in the history of this grape, sort of a teenage phase, if you will. Unfortunately, that short-lived phase left an indelible impression about Zinfandel that's been hard to shake. When able to reach full maturity and its peak expression, Zinfandel makes some of the greatest red wines in the world. That's right, Zin is actually a red grape. And much like this wine, the history of the grape is a little misunderstood. For years, California laid claim to Zinfandel. The story was that it had been brought from Europe in the 1860s by a Hungarian prospector named Agaston Horasti. Horasti founded the Buena Vista Winery and is credited with pioneering the California wine industry. And it wasn't until the 20th century that a wine historian named Charles L. Sullivan finally discovered that Zinfandel had been imported from Austria to Long Island, New York. In the 1840s, Zinfandel was being grown on the East Coast as a table grape, long before it ever reached California. So then, if Zinfandel is not from Hungary, where does it come from? Austria? Wrong again. It took years of genetic research for scientists to finally uncover the source. In the 1990s, it was finally determined that the grape was identical to a red grape growing on the heel of Italy, known as Primitivo. So, mystery solved, right? Except there was still one problem. Further DNA testing revealed that this grape had ancient relatives in Croatia. Upon further testing, Zinfandel and Primitivo were further connected to a rare Croatian grape called Krojlanac Kastelanski. Krojlanac, Krojlanac Kastelanski. Wow, unless you're Slavic, that's a real mouthful. And that grape was so rare that it was almost extinct. So Zinfandel comes from Croatia by way of Italy, by way of Boston and New York, and ultimately to California, where it becomes the primary grape grown and used in winemaking from the times of the gold rush until prohibition. And now comes that sort of awkward teenage phase that I was talking about before. In post-World War II America, winemakers had so much Zinfandel on their hands that they didn't know what to do with it. And this is the moment in Zinfandel's history where it becomes probably the most popular wine in the United States. And according to some, quite possibly the worst. And to this day, that unfortunate reputation still precedes it to a certain extent. When people hear the word Zinfandel, they automatically assume it's gonna be that cheap, sweet blush wine that was popular in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. As we now know, Zinfandel is capable of so much more. So let's talk about its characteristics. Zinfandel comes from a part of the world that's relatively warm, but not hot. Croatia and Southern Italy are both categorized as having a Mediterranean climate. So naturally the grape does well in temperate zones where the growing season is sufficiently long, warm, and dry enough to really get those grapes ripe. And this is why Zin thrives in California where it's still the second most planted red grape behind Cabernet Sauvignon. There are some newer locations in the Southern US like Texas that are growing it to great results. The vine tends to do best in dry soils and when it's really happy, it can live for a very long time. Many of the world's best Zinfandel wines come from vines that are over 100 years old. You'll often see this feature called out on the label. Zinfandel grapes are typically high in sugar, which correlates to higher alcohol level. If you take a closer look, you'll notice that most Zins are pretty bold. This one here is 16.5% ABV, which is pretty big. Zinfandel is one of those red wines that just hits you in all the right spots. Drinking it is often more a feeling than anything you can specify. To me, good Zin almost always reminds me of berry preserves. 
In the wine world, we sometimes use the term jelly jar to describe Zinfandel's flavors, but some people frown upon that expression because they think it makes it too pedestrian. But there really is a ripe, full, and juicy sensation here that feels like you just ate a spoonful of mixed berry preserves with a sprinkle of spice on top. If I had to call out specific flavors, I'd say Zin tastes like blackberries, blueberries, often plum, and the spicy element takes the form of cinnamon or a slight black pepper burn on the finish. In Italy, Primitivo tends to be less bold and muscular and presents tart flavors and even herbal notes. Here's one way to think of it. If American Zin drinks more like a dessert, then Italian Primitivo feels more like the main course. Most Zinfandel producers use oak very judiciously, as Zinfandel is better left to shine on its own. Just a light touch of oak will leave most Zins with some hints of cedar and sometimes hickory smoke. In California, Dry Creek is the preeminent Zin region. It's home to Ridge Vineyards, which is probably one of the best and most famous Zin producers in California. Lodi is situated in California's Central Valley and has long been an agricultural center. Although it's home to several large industrial-sized wine producers, it's still a great source for everyday valued drinkers. Italian Primitivo almost always comes from the southern part of the country, namely the region of Puglia, which most people will know as the heel of the boot. This particular brand here is one of my favorites, and they make some really graceful wines. This one is from 30-year-old vines. High-quality Zinfandel can also be found to the north of California in Washington State. Now this brand here is one of my personal favorites and comes from the Columbia Valley region, which is almost desert-like. Now let's talk about some food pairings for Zinfandel. And when it comes to effectively pairing wine and food together, I try to encourage people to think about their wine less as a beverage and more as a food ingredient. If you think about the terms that we use to describe these Zinfandel wines, things like blueberries and blackberries, jelly jar, spices, cedar, and smoke, then it helps to start thinking about the types of food that those flavors pair with. How about something like smoked poultry? Or how about a spicy dry rub on some barbecued ribs? Or maybe a pepper steak stir fry? Seitan for you vegetarians. And one of my favorites, peanut butter brownies. Anyway, I think you get the general gist of where I'm going with this, so let your imagination run wild. The possibilities are endless when it comes to pairing Zinfandel and food. So, now that you've learned a bit about Cruz Lenac, Primitivo, and Zinfandel, go give them all a try and let me know what you think. I always invite you to share your thoughts and feelings with me in the comments section below this video. Hey, if you're located in the United States, why not consider doing an actual wine tasting event together with me? If you live on the East Coast, I can actually come to your location and I'll bring all the wines and the food pairings as well. And if you're located anywhere else in the country, we can do a virtual tasting through my online partners. I'll leave a link below this video so that you can find more information. Thanks so much for hanging with me today. Stay tuned for more of these videos in the near future, and I'll see you for the next bottle. Cheers.